So let's talk about the equation. I'm going to put it up, and you can see that there's four different variables. You have present value, you have future value, you have your rate, and you have the number of periods. So present value and future value actually use the same equation. You can just flip the equation around depending on what you're trying to calculate. Um, in the example we did previously with the dollar today and the dollar tomorrow, we're just talking about one period, so we didn't consider the uh, variable n, but because it was just one. Um, but if you, when you get into more periods or multiple periods, you would raise it to the power of the number of periods you're dealing with. And the reason why you do this is because of compounding interest. Compounding interest comes, also comes from this idea of the time value of money. And that happens because you're experiencing this level of risk period after period after period. So you're not only being compensated for the risk of each of those periods, but for the additional amount that you should receive from the interest in the preceding periods. So um, one period down the road, you should be receiving interest not only for the risk of that period, but also interest on the interest you received the last period. To make this make more sense, I'm going to put up an amortization table. And you see these all throughout finance. And what this is showing is what's happening each period. And this is an amortization table starting with $10,000 with 10% risk each period. So the first period, you have $10,000 starting value. Multiply that by 1.1 to get the effect of 10% risk, and that gives you your ending value. That ending value becomes the starting value for the next period, which then you experience 10% risk again and so on and so forth through all the periods. Well, this uh, mathematical process is the same thing as raising your risk to the power of the number of periods. So you can either go through and create an amortization table or you can simply say $10,000 times 1.1 raised to the power of 5 would equal $16,105. You can do either way, and mathematically it's the same thing. So you're receiving, at the end of the five periods, you would receive the $10,000 plus interest of $6,105 to compensate you for holding 10% risk for five consecutive periods. So let's talk about an application. Because in application, you actually use present value more often than future value. Because what you're usually doing is you're usually evaluating several different options for investment. And in investment, you're going to receive some value in the future. So let's look at a specific example. Let's say you have $50 in the bank. And you're looking at three potential investment options. The first option, you receive $50 in one year with 10% risk. The second option, you receive $100 in five years at 5% risk. And the third option, you receive $500 in 10 years at 10% risk. So these are three different options. They all have uh, different time frames. They all have different risks. So how do you compare apples with apples? to determine what's the best option. Well, if you take all three of those options and you value them back to today's dollars, then you can compare them and the best value is going to be the best option for you to pick. So in looking at these different options, I'm going to put up the results and you can see the first option, the $50, you actually lose value. And so let's think about this. I have $50 today. Someone says they're going to give me $50 a year from now. Well, it's not actually worth $50. It's worth something less than that because I'm holding risk. It's actually worth $45.45. .45. So 
So I'm actually losing money out of that deal even though I'm actually receiving $50 in the future. So I don't want option one. Now let's look at option two and option three. Now the future values are $100 and $500. And so there's a big difference there. And you would think that $500 would be preferable, but it's actually not. It's actually less valuable because you're holding so much more risk for such a longer period of time. It's actually more beneficial to you choose the second option. That gives you the greatest amount of value. And let's think what's happening here. Because, you know, we say a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow, but you're, you're always wanting the dollar tomorrow. You don't want to hoard all your money today. The intention is we want to get rid of our money. We want to put our money out there so that it goes to work for us, so that we get the interest, so we get more money in the future. That money comes back to us, and then we can do it all over again. And year after year after year, grow, continue to grow our money. So we don't want the dollar today. We always want the dollar tomorrow. The question becomes, out of the infinite choices out there, on where to invest our money, which is the one that gives us the most value. And we figure that out by calculating things back to the present value and comparing them. So I hope this gives you a sense that, you know, investing is really just swapping money back and forth between parties with different payouts, different time periods, and different levels of risk. And, you know, if you can write out what your assumptions are, if you can write out what the time periods are and what your assessment of the risk is, you can then use this equation to calculate what is your best option. I use this, the time value of money, all the time. And I actually don't use my calculator. I'll just write out the equation and calculate it out. And I write out the equation because, first of all, it's so much fun. But second of all, you know, it really helps you to understand what your assumptions are. You want to understand your assumptions because that is driving the result. That's driving your understanding of, okay, what is the best decision that I can make? So to recap, we talked about the concept of the time value of money. Then we walked through the, through the equation. And finally, we talked about how you would apply it.